Hi everybody, it's Stu, AG6AG. You know, this video is going to cover what frequencies an amateur technician is licensed on on 2 meters and 440. Um, I've been asked on some nets about using certain frequencies, you know, folks that are new amateur radio operators that meet up with a bunch of like off-roaders in the desert or meet up with a bunch of people that are, uh, you know, uh, fishing offshore or whatever and uh, you know they're given these frequencies to use you know oh yeah we all talk on this frequency um, but they don't do their due diligence and the people that are giving them the frequency probably don't know what that frequency is used for in the first place so I really feel that this is an important subject I hope you enjoy the video oh and you know what I'd really appreciate it Click down there and subscribe if you like my videos because you know what? That's the only way I know is the number of subscribers I get tells me how many people are actually enjoying my videos. And uh, click the like if you like it. Thanks again. And let's get on with the show. All right. Well, this is Stu, AG6AG, and we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, amateur radio technician class allocations. Um, you know, this whole thing kind of came up because uh, I had a very new ham that had reached out during a net and also reached out to me privately to ask questions about some problems that they were having with their new Yesu FT60. And the problem was that they were out in the desert with a bunch of friends and uh, their friends said, oh yeah, we're on uh, 460.450. Um, well... They tuned it in as a simplex frequency, and they went to key it, and it said air on the front of the radio. Well, I've been around Yesus long enough to know that when you key a radio and it says air, chances are you're outside of the amateur radio band. And 460 is way outside the amateur radio band. So that made me think that, you know, maybe some folks out there with their licenses go out and they want to use them and they're excited and they're around other amateur radio operators and the amateur radio operator really that they're out there with doesn't know enough to mentor them or really be a good Elmer and they give them misinformation certainly probably not in malice but just they don't know either uh, but someone told them that that frequency was okay uh, but I hate to tell you, 460.450, that's, that's a public safety frequency. You're not ever supposed to be on that. So, um, anyway, let's look at what you're actually supposed to be on as an amateur radio operator. Now, the one place for information on amateur radio, ARRL, Dot org. Okay? It is your one stop shop for answers about amateur radio laws, regulations, operational uh, uh, use, uh, formulas, antenna design, all sorts of stuff. It is a massive site designed to help you in your quest to be a better amateur radio operator. Okay? I am going to go over here to the web search, okay, and I am going to search it for amateur, I have to spell it right, frequency allocations, and hit enter, and a couple pages here. There is, of course, the Amateur Radio Frequency Allocations page, which basically goes down and talks about all the frequencies and what rights each individual group has. Um, this is great if you want to drill down into, uh, you know, actual numbers that are easy to see in print. Uh, but me, personally, I like the graphic uh, the graphical frequency allocation charts. And let's go ahead and look at the big one here. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna full screen this thing. There we go. 
And this is U.S. Amateur Radio Bands, as of right now, uh, listed on what license levels get what frequencies. Now, we're kind of centering this on the new technician class amateur radio operator. The person that's gone out and bought that first Baofeng, or, or bought that first Yesu HT, or maybe bought a, you know, a, a inexpensive mobile or whatever. Um, you guys are new to this, and I know that. And uh, it's important for you to find people to help you, but it's also important for you to find people that give you the right information. Um, one of the biggest problems that uh, I've been seeing with amateur radio technicians that just got their licenses you know, they go out to the desert or they go on a fishing boat or whatever and they've got their little radio and they're all excited and, uh, you know, they're, they, somebody turns around and says, oh, yeah, well, we're all on this frequency, you know, or whatever. And um, it's a frequency they're not licensed for. Not only is it a frequency they're not licensed for, it typically is a public safety frequency. Uh, it might even be one that's registered strictly to law enforcement or search and rescue. And, you know, if you're out in the desert and you're on that frequency chattering, you know, you could be making interference that could cost someone their life, okay? Um, you have an amateur radio license. It's your responsibility to know where you can and can't transmit, Okay. And the rules are rather simple to understand when you think about it. You are licensed for a particular allocation of frequencies within a particular band. And you're licensed for a bunch of bands and a bunch of frequencies. So there's really no reason for you to play outside that. Okay. Number two, um, you are more than welcome to operate on other part 95 or part 15 bands okay, providing that you obey all the rules and the radio that you're using is certified for those bands, okay? That means that just because your Baofeng can transmit on these other frequencies that are out for uh, GMRS or out for, uh, you know, Family Radio Service, FRS, um, it doesn't mean it's legal for you to use that Baofeng at the power levels that Baofeng can put out, Okay. Just toss it out there because guess what? You're licensed. You're responsible to know this stuff. So with that, let's talk a little bit about your responsibility to know. Here on this far side over here, the far right side of the chart, this really covers where you're primarily going to be as a technician class operator. And in most cases, well, if you're operating on a little HT dual band, you're probably only going to be worried about 2 meters and 70 centimeters, right? Because that's what your dual band covers. So let's take that example. So let's say that you're out in the desert and somebody tells you that uh, they're on 170 dot whatever, program your radio for that. Well, you know what? Your Baofeng will transmit on that. Uh, there's questions as to how legal that is uh, for the Baofeng to be manufactured and able to transmit on those frequencies. However, for sure, you're not allowed to transmit on those frequencies because your allocation goes from 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. And I'll tell you right now that all of like 168 to 173 megahertz is licensed to farm. It's licensed to agricultural and it's licensed for sensor reports, okay? Also, U.S. Geological uses that to check on uh, seismic uh, uh, devices. So, you know, if you're on there, you're messing with people's livelihood. You don't want to do that. You don't want to interfere with them. So, remember, if you're operating on the ham bands, Make sure that you're operating within those frequency ranges between 144 and 148. Same thing with 70 centimeters. You're licensed from 420 megahertz to 450 megahertz. That's it. It's all yours, though. You can do whatever you want with it, but that's it, right? 
if somebody comes to you and says, yeah, we're uh, running on 460.450, right? Well, guess what? That's a public safety frequency. That's reserved for law enforcement, search and rescue, and the coordinator for those frequencies is, uh, you know, uh, police. Um, you know, you get caught using that or you use that and you're interfering with a search and rescue out in the desert. You could cost people their lives, okay? Literally. You could make enough interference to make it difficult to rescue someone. So these allocations are really, really important to know, okay? Anyway, I wanted to cover that because I'm getting a lot of questions about that and it scares me a little bit. You're a licensed amateur radio operator. These were questions that probably were on the test. Maybe you memorized them and got the test questions right or whatever. But please, do us all a favor. Everyone, all of humanity, you need to know where you're licensed to operate and where you won't interfere with other people. Anyway, with that, hey, that's all I got. Thank you so much for listening. This is AG6AG. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm being a little preachy here. But, you know, I've seen what happens when people interfere on emergency frequencies. And, and it's not a good thing. It never is. Uh, the people that use those frequencies are out trying to protect property in other people's lives. And sometimes they have to put their lives at risk to do it. And many times that radio is their only link to people that will come and help them. So anyway, please, if you're using a two-way radio, make sure that the frequency that you're on is one that you are licensed to use or is licensed for the general public. And please, if somebody says, oh, we just use this, don't trust them blindly as to what that frequency is. Like I said, um, you know, someone told me that they were told to use 460450, which is a public service frequency, and that could cost lives, okay? Anyway, hey, thank you for listening to me preach. Do me a favor. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, um, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, put the comments down below, okay? I try to answer any questions within a day or two. And for gosh sakes, if you like the stuff I'm doing, subscribe, will you? And then click the little bell. You'll get informed when I come out with new videos, okay? Thank you so much for listening. This is AG6AG, Stu bidding you 73 and I really hope I hear you on the air.